the Frames Per Second Podcast. Bye, 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 bye. What's going on? It's your boy, Nick. Um, I'm here with Kenneth B. Inge. Hola. Spike Lou of the On Deck TV podcast, Another Week in the Books. How you doing, sir? What's going on, my brother? Pretty good. Modest Media. <laughs> What's up, man? What's up, man? And Mike C-Town. Yo. Hey, you now tuned in to the Frames Per Second podcast. And in this episode, we are continuing on with our weekly recaps of the new HBO original series coming from the DC Universe titled Penguin. Um, this recap is dedicated to episode four titled, uh, is it uh, Sentani? Sentani? I think that's what mm-hmm. it she said it at, She said it at the end of the episode, I think it's Sentani. Yep. Um, anybody can correct me later if I'm wrong. But um, as we always do, we don't bury the lead. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Overall thoughts. I'll start with you, Rod. Oh, man, this was a a really, really great episode and opportunity to allow Sophia to shine, you know. Um, So, yeah, I really like that they they took this time to uh, to tell this this storyline or whatnot. Like she she deserves like her own episode count in, in this in this situation. So, yeah, this was. This was amazing performance. Amazing performance from her. What about you, Mike? I agree with Rod. This was an amazing performance from her. However, I don't... This might be my least enjoyed episode. And I'm surprised because I really wanted to see this backstory. And maybe I need to watch it again. Um, but yeah, I thought this episode was was cool. The other ones, I've been like, yo, this is crazy. This one, I was like, all right. That was good. What about you, Lou? Uh, I'm right there with Mike. I, I like the character of Sophia. I think she did an amazing job, like Ross said. I didn't need the full hour of her. Mm-hmm. I'm interested in her backstory. I'm not interested enough for them not having the best character on the show on here for most of the show. Like, th- there wasn't enough penguin. <laughs> it was a relief. It was a relief that he wasn't on. <laughs> but no, I just it needed more of um the penguin. Like it needed more of that and just mixing her in there where they still could have told that story. But again, she did a great job, but it just didn't hold me like the other ones did. Hmm. Um, yeah, man, I, I I thought it was incredible. I really enjoyed this one. Um you know the backstory, the origin story of of how we ended up where we are in present day. Uh, it was kind of good to go back to see how she was compared to where she is now, um, which is a stark contrast. And um, yeah, man, I, I I thought it was dope. I, I was I was yeah yeah I did I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. Um... I think she did an incredible job with her acting this episode, but to like Mike and Lou's point, I think it was still a little bit too long within the episode just to be with her. I would have liked to have, even though Penguin was in this episode, it wasn't like he was really in it. Mm -hmm. Um, But as far as like acting wise, I think she did, she has some scenes where I'm like, okay, she's trying to go for an award Mm -hmm. on this one, you know, for something like this. So, um, but I think it's it's not a bad episode at all, but I do think as, as far as, where we're going, this may be a little like kind of dip a little bit because we may catapult to somewhere else next episode. But nonetheless, it was still good. You know what, Nick? Before you move on real quick, when you're talking about her acting and how she was going for it, one thing I wanted to bring up is just like, it seemed like she was playing two different people. Mm -hmm. And that's what jumped out about her acting in this episode. The fact that she she's played the the prior to Arkham Sophia is a completely different person than the post Arkham Sophia, and I think the fact that she was able to make those two characters is amazing. When I'm watching this, I was like, "Oh, we can see what Arkham did to you because you were fairly normal before. Yeah, you got fucked up later. <laughs> yeah, and um." And I I found it interesting because usually they do like timestamps, but when they're doing flashbacks Mm -hmm. or something like that, so they didn't really do that this episode. You just kind of had to 
Um, but you can tell. Yeah. You can yeah. tell by her. Like, they didn't need yeah. to talk to them. You just look at how she's acting, and you can tell where we are. That's that's some crazy story writing, man. And it's, and I know y'all haven't seen this, uh, this show, but I, I watched it faithfully. But she was on the show, this sick rom-com called How I Met Your Mother, before she was on this show. And she was, like, in that earlier Sophia character where she's, like, a normal, mm-hmm. you know, person just doing being you know a white woman type shit so like to your point mike her being in this character this is the darkest role i've ever seen her in Mm. as far as up until this episode so like seeing i knew she had it in her but Mm. her being able i'm more impressed of her being able to be to go to the dark side and and kind of Mm. be more menacing like that's and then the way she balanced it out with this episode like oh she can do it both at at a whim so i think yeah again it goes to her acting Mm. but i um I loved how we started off this episode where we pick up right off um, from the previous one when Penguin and Sophia are being run up by Nadia, who's uh, Maroni's wife, um, and their henchmen, and Nadia talking hella shit. <laughs> she, she basically spilling everything, spilling the whole fucking pee. Rod, I was, I was wondering your thoughts as far as like, what did you think about this opening scene? Like, because I know we came off of like the last episode thinking like, what was she saying before Vic pulled up with the whip? But she, I, I wasn't expecting all that. Yeah, I don't know if I was expecting that either. Like, but th- again, that's what I love about this show. Like, they put him in these these uh, situations. It's like, yo, like, what is gonna happen? How is he gonna mm-hmm. talk his way through this? So I thought it was really interesting that he had to kind of pick. <clears throat> Excuse me. That he had to kind of pick. Okay, who? Who am I going to side with right now? Am I going to side with the person that got a gun in my face? Or am I going to side with the person I'm doing this deal with? So I thought that was really, really, really good writing to to put him in that predicament. You can kind of see him processing mm-hmm. it, too. Yep. You can see him processing like, fuck, do I still stay with this story with her? Or do I go with the... Like, yeah, man, I, I, I thought that was amazing. I, I, I thought that was amazing. And just how, how uh, she was just devastated by what he was saying. And then they showed a close up of him, like, like, uh, did your cat just Spit, fall? Yeah, like him, like him spitting and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. him spitting and shit. Um, it's like you, <laughs> you foul mouth mother. Like it's like in her mind, like he's like you, dirty, not like you, filthy, mm-hmm. lying sack of shit. Like that, that depiction kind of said that, and I was just like, man, that. Man, what they're doing with this show, man. Like, shout out to y'all for having the foresight because I did not know that this show would be this good. Like, I, I didn't know that this show was going to be like this. Like, this is really good. What about you, Lou? Yeah, I, I think we spoke on it last week. Like, I love to hear what the conversation was about. It was a brilliant job of the show with the writers to just start right there. And now we know why he mm-hmm. said leave that bitch when he jumped in the car. Like <laughs> yeah. it was over. Like that. that yeah. I see exactly why he said that now. Like that. That ship had sailed. Uh, right. if they had saved her too. So yeah, that was a really good scene. Uh, everything Rod said, as far as how they were just showing her going off, doing the close-ups, then looking at his face. And we talked about this a lot last week. How you never really can tell if he's lying or not. Like you just see him mm-hmm. processing the information. It's like, okay, what should I do next? What's the best thing for me to do next? And that's how I'm gonna do it. It don't matter if it's a lie. It don't matter. Just I got to get out of this current situation. He does that so well. And she was able to see that firsthand, like mm-hmm. firsthand, like just see how well he lies out his mouth. Like, yeah, man, I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. What about you, Mike? Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. I do like the way that they played this scene because I was, I was dying to know what was being said during those few minutes that we didn't get to see. And yeah, I I think this is again, Colin Farrell's brilliant acting to where you can legit see the wheels turning and him processing. How the fuck do I get out of this? Who do I side with? And him just groveling and lying like he always does. But and then her acting is incredible because you can see it on her face where she's like, Oh, I'm being played. She's looking at him, she doesn't even care that there's a gun pointing at her. She's looking at right. him like, What are you talking about? Wait, what are they talking about? You've been <laughs> lying. She's not worried about getting <laughs> shot. She's worried about the fact that she finally put a little bit of trust in this motherfucker and he played her. Yep. Yeah, Ken, I, 
I don't know if there's a way that I can see Penguin getting out of this, especially like seeing that opening scene. I don't know if you were thinking about that too, but obviously we still have more episodes to go. Um, but yeah, this opening scene made me think like, oh yeah, he that bridge has to be burnt to the ground at this point. Hmm. Did she outright say Penguin killed her brother? Yeah. Yes. Yes, she did. <laughs> yes, she did. I, she I, said I she like killed him. Like, yeah, absolutely, kid. Yeah. I'm, I'm asking. Huh? She said, "Ah, she's like, oh, you didn't know. Mm -hmm. You didn't know. Yeah." Well, I, I asked him. because you know how man, y'all know how Oz is. Since she didn't mm -hmm. say, "Yeah, Oz killed Alberto," you know he, you know he could find a way to mm -hmm. get out he of did, it somehow, some way. But she did so. though. <laughs> she did. Say she yeah, that's why I was asking if she said, yeah, "Yeah, Alberto killed Oz." No, you didn't Oz know that. killed Alberto. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, um, but. Yeah, no, nah, it was it was it was it was interesting. It was a good scene. And you know, I think it was a good setup to where we went next because you can see kind of what with the first three episodes, the trust rebuilding in him. And then just like that, it was taken away. Mm -hmm. And then they showed us exactly what happened between the two as well. So I thought that in terms of, of storytelling and writing, I thought that that was, that was really good in how they did that. Yeah, um, I agree with y'all. Um, and after Vic crashes the car and rides off with Penguin, we see that, I, I don't know, if, did she get shot and it just like skimped her mm -hmm. head or, or is there some debris or something like that? I think, she, I think something like flew from the car and knocked her over. I rebounded back two or three times. I couldn't yeah. really see what happened either, but she's bleeding here. Yeah, yeah, she. I just I saw that she had a cut on her head, and then I guess that caused her to slowly go into unconsciousness. Before, but before that, she calls up uh, Doctor Russ or Julian um, for her help. Um, but then, as we go to her passing out, we kind of go to a flashback um, to ten years earlier, which is you know where we kind of start with her story. Um, and in that moment, Lou, she want... says it was Oz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, but she says it like quietly, like going into mm -hmm. like you know unconscious. Yeah. Um, Lou, what did you think about like? I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to stick to the timeline as much as possible, but I know there's a lot to kind of talk about within this part of the flashbacks. But starting off, what did you think about the early part of the flashbacks when we, um, when we see what kind of person Sophia was, especially at the um, Isabella Falcone Foundation event, um, where we see her, you know accepting that award or just accepting that leadership role um mike hit on it earlier i, I think looking at this it added depth to this story because the first thing i'm thinking was like oh okay so she's not insane like it, it was something that happened to her to make her be the crazy sophia that we see now in the current timeline so i enjoy seeing her talking to the crowd doing the whole thing with the foundation even how she was handling oz and kind of like playfully jabbing at him or in the back and forth that they had, you could tell she was a completely different person. And while, again, I said it may have been a little bit too much as far as how much they did in the story with this episode, but it was enough to add depth to her character. I really liked the depth that it added to her character where we could see, oh, okay. And it made it make more sense. You got the same thing out of that too, Ken? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I pretty much echo what Spike was saying. Mike, you could also include your thoughts on like Sophia's just like character early on in this episode when we go back into flashback. But I also wanted to touch on like what did you think about just like the early relationship we see between her and Penguin too as her driver, which she alluded to in the, I think in the last episode. Uh, yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. I think that is amazing that she's playing these two completely different people because we see here that she was very nice to Oz. <laughs> she was she was respectful. She was trying to build him up, you know, telling people don't call him Penguin, all of this stuff, only for him to dog her out. And then, you know, we see her kind of start being mean later. But I think that that's what made this episode actually interesting is watching this. I don't know if you can call it a progression, but just this change in Sophia. 
Yeah, right. What, what were your thoughts on Sophia? I mean, that, this is the reason why I really like this episode. Because, uh, I mean, you got to show the ops strength, right? Like, you got to build up that character. I say this all the time about, about opposing people, like, enemies in, in a show. So to spend this much time showing, like, how she actually wasn't insane, how she was actually trying to do good with the with the organization, just kind of being naive to the things that her father's doing, things like that. And then, you know, uh, just showing all of that. I thought that was a really interesting. I, I wasn't expecting this type of episode, but I, I was really happy that we got it. Uh, just to kind of get some backstory for her. Because we, we say it every week, you know what I'm saying? Oh, man, Colin Farrell's doing a great job, but she's doing a great job as well. So I was mm -hmm. really excited to get a, a, a backstory on her. Um, so, yeah, I, I really I really enjoyed kind of like what Mike has already alluded to, just the, just how she's playing these two different characters. Like, damn. Like, it, it's really it's really impressive, man. Yeah, Ron, I want to follow up with you and, and, and others can chime in too. Mm -hmm. At this point in the episode, we, we see after the luncheon, um, there's a random woman, but we find out there's a reporter. She comes up to so Sophia mm -hmm. asking questions, right? Yeah. At this point in the episode, because of what we know so far of Sophia, did y'all think like this is one of her early victims as the hangman? Did I think that? Yeah. I don't I don't think I was thinking that that was like that that was at this point I didn't think she was the hangman because she's already said it prior to this, right? So I'm 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 already looking like I don't think she actually killed these people or whatever. So I never thought that we would see her killing uh these these victims or whatever. I didn't think it was her. So I never had that thought, to be quite honest. Gotcha. Am I the only yeah, one that was Nah, yeah. nah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think that, um, cause she, you know, I think we were just starting out. So she, we saw that she was at these charity event and she didn't really like doing them. She was only doing them because, you know, for the family or whatever. And here comes this person. So it made sense for her to be a reporter. And I didn't think of, and look at her as a victim, especially when she was like, oh, what, what organization you say you were, you were from again? I think it was just a way to kind of set up the whole um, beginning of the backstory that, that we got with Sophia. Am I, am I on alone on that uh, thought, Mike? Or um, you just which thought again, Nick? As far as like the press uh, reporter, like thinking mm -hmm. like she may be like an early victim of Sophia's or however we get to the Sophia we got to today. So no, I never thought that she was gonna kill the reporter. I did, however, think that even if she's not the hangman, I definitely felt like she killed people. I thought that she was going to be some sort of like low level enforcer, like she'd killed somebody. And that's why it made it so easy for them to dump the other bodies on her. But, but no, nah, I never really thought that she was going to kill the reporter. But I do like how it turned out that somebody killed her and they put it off on Sophia. I do like how they let that play out. And I think that report is actually in the animated series, um, as well. But which one? I watched it. Summer Gleason. No, I mean like what animated series? The the most Batman recent one. The, on Not Amazon? the one we just watched. I, I uh, don't know which one. I think it's Bat. I saw somebody mention uh, show a picture of her in the, in the animated series. I don't know which one. Gotcha. Is this previous lore that y'all basing this off of, or y'all were looking at this thinking, "Oh, she killed her." I, this was a, a, I didn't know anything previous. I don't know who this person is. Yeah, I mean, you thought that she, did you, so you think that she's a killer, like based off what we've seen so far? Is I thought that before, before this episode, I did. I thought she definitely could kill people. The way she's acting, only a killer eats like that, Spike. <laughs> but she killed exactly. somebody to, you know, so to, to y'all thinking that she killed somebody, uh, like, like, aimlessly killed a boy or whatever when he was like. When Oz kind of lied on him, he just killed him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Killed, yeah, killed the little boy, yeah. Like, he just made me shield him for nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah she's definitely a killer now. I gotcha, don't think gotcha, she was gotcha. dead. Right. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, we then see Carmine Falcone, who's been recasted, um, and Sophia and Alberto uh, talk after the foundation luncheon um, about the quote-unquote family business. We see that... Uh, 
the father doesn't really look favorably on the son because he ain't really giving a fuck about it. But he looks at Sophia and uh, with a different lens. Uh, Lou, were you surprised about their relationship um, that it was this strong early on, knowing at this time we already know that Falcone put her in Arkham, but like just to see, like, damn, like how you go from this to that? Were you surprised that the relationship was that strong? Uh, it made sense, but like, because she all she carries herself like she's daddy's little girl. Um, I didn't know much of the backstory in the sense of, well, I know he got her locked up, but yeah, it's starting there. And then we knowing what happened to her, it was interesting, but it wasn't surprising that they had the stronger relationship. I think it made her easier to double cross action. Um, I, I thought it was interesting their relationship. I actually love this part of her story, given what we've seen, her how her interactions with the other men in the family have gone so far. And for him to say that you got it, you are the one, I don't care about any of the other shit that people are talking about, like, you're going to run the family when I'm gone. Um, you know, I was like, well, shit, what happened? How did she not end up running the family? And we already see the family's not fucking with her. Is this, is this the reason why? Did they get wind of this and turn against her? Like, there were questions that I had. So I thought it was dope that um, that we saw this part of her relationship with with her dad yeah uh mike during that conversation sophia you know brings up how she didn't remember her mom ever dealing with like mental health issues and stuff like mm -hmm. that that's what the whole foundation is built off of and just kind of wanted more clarity from her father was it at this point where you were like, this is where she fucked up? <laughs> asking too many questions. Because <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Yep. I was like. You can see it on his face. Yeah, you, you can see it on his face. But as the audience, I was just like, do you think he's going to tell you the truth? Mm. If you really think he killed your mother, why are you asking these dumbass questions? Do you think he that was her first? Think. Do you think that was her first thought? Or she was just asking, like, what really went down? Not thinking her father had anything to do with it, just like what really oh. happened. You know? Well, this was before she got the other additional insight. So this was just her probably going off memory of like yeah. these flashbacks that she was having. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I see what y'all are saying. So maybe she didn't think he did it. She was just wondering who did it or what happened. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just feel like when you're when you're when your dad is a mob boss and your mama comes up dead, I just assume he did it. <laughs> yeah, it seemed pretty accusatory too. It, it, it seemed like to me she was telling, like, I know you did this shit. It yeah, wasn't I mean, asking. Yeah, that's what I thought before y'all started talking. Yeah. You got that too, Spike? I got the no. same thing. I was like, well, why the fuck would she say so? In the first she conversation? Knows? Yeah. It did feel why would you? Way. Why would you ask him? Right. Like, he going, oh, yeah, I killed him. Mm. No, 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 no. I, I didn't get that from the first conversation. Mm. I, I got that she was kind of curious. Um, wait, 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 hold on. What did the reporter say to her? Because you know what? The reporter did mention yeah. her mom. Yeah. She just didn't go into the level of detail until later on. But she was like, yeah, here are all these photos. Oh, and then I think she saw, okay, okay. Wait, no, she saw the photos of the mom later, but she said, including your mom. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. I got it. Yeah, so she was, okay, yeah. She didn't go all in until later. Right. But she but showed yeah. she showed her the pictures and she said, she basically said, your daddy's been out here killing chicks. <laughs> That's what she basically said. Including your mom. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that at that moment that she walked in that room thinking, my dad may have done this. No, 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 no. Remember, she was like, there are these murders, these women. The, so there's the woman at the club mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. we found hanging and then there are all these other women that work at the club and they have this strange tie in with, I think your dad. And then she said, including your mom. And that right. was like the setup that right. got her to go in there and be like, Hey, you know, by the way, you know, this whole thing with mom, like, you know, uh, was she ever depressed? <laughs> like, or, you know, did she ever have mental issues? Did she go see anybody about the mental issues? It was that sort of prying that she was doing, but you yeah. know the reaction from the dad i'm with you she was you know it was, it was like hey wait a minute i just said you're gonna be the family you're gonna run this shit, and here you are asking me about this <laughs> yeah, shit. hold yeah. on now <laughs> but you asking these dumb ass questions right but no, Rod, like, why are you making he's like why are you making me upset 
right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, why you gonna be mad? <laughs> I'm like, damn, bro. <laughs> Go but ahead. Rob, what is, what is, if you are going? If you're telling your your daughter that you you want her to inherit the family business in this world, not not necessarily saying you would tell her about that specific situation, but you would let her know what's really going on, like what she needs to kind of mentally prepare for, right? So her asking questions is shouldn't have been looked at as a bad thing, but it felt like that. I don't know. Did you feel that same way? I mean, it was a personal attack for him, on him. Like, I don't think she has a. I mean, she may have a slight issue with the with the things that he probably does, but that's her mom. You know what I'm saying? They showed a very, mm -hmm. like the way they showed her find her mom was like like was was crazy. Like her hanging and grabbing her hand and stuff like that. That was a very traumatizing experience. So that that's different than him just doing mob shit in my opinion you get yeah. my mom like you know what i'm saying that's just different yeah. so yeah I, I think he would have been totally fine with telling her like the ins and outs of, uh, and the dirtiness of the business but mm -hmm. not never wanting to admit to actually killing her mom his, her mom yeah i agree with that i think i, I think mafia business and i'm a serial killer slash sexual <laughs> abuser right. is a lot different and especially like it being his daughter like mm -hmm. he, he don't want nobody. I, I, I'm assuming that no one knows about this, mm -hmm. other than the reporter. Hmm. That's a good. Uh, that's an interesting point. Right. I think. Yeah. I don't know. At this point, he already did, so I don't know who else would know. <laughs> but um, after questioning her father and Alberto about the family business and what's really uh what went down with her mom, uh, Sophia starts looking for more answers elsewhere and meets up with the reporter. Who approached her? Who approached her at the luncheon? Mike, did it make sense why Sophia allowed herself to get close to the reporter after their interaction at the luncheon? Yeah, because like Rod said, that's her, that's her mother. She wants to know what's going on, you know, with her mother. What happened with her mother? I think the only thing that was stupid was was bringing Oz. Oz. Yep. That didn't make any sense. Why would you? You 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 should know that with mob business you can't talk to press or cops unless unless they're on the payroll already you shouldn't be going out there talking to any press or cops so she should have left oz at home and said i'm gonna go do something on my own now she would have been tracked of course they would have you know they'd have been like well that's weird why is oz not driving you but regardless i just didn't think it made much sense for her to put that kind of trust in oz that was stupid. it didn't it didn't. I mean, at the end of the day, like Oz works for your dad, right? You, you know what I'm right. saying? Like he has loyalty to your dad. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? He's just your driver. And you said this very many times. He's just mm -hmm. your driver. You know what I'm saying? But he's hired by your father to be your driver. So of course he's going to report back on some fishy stuff, right? I agree with that. However, I think it came across that it seemed like they had this sort of friendship or trust hmm. th that with with one another hmm. and she didn't think he would end up doing what he eventually did um because they were friendly you know talking all chumming it up and stuff like that so i think she sort of felt maybe that she was a little bit safe Stupid. with him and she wasn't paying attention to um before they met up when they were when she was talking to alberto and he was just sitting there just you know being nosy and shit, uh eavesdropping on the whole conversation and stuff like that um so yeah i, I don't i don't think she realized the nature of the relationship in terms of who works for whom until after everything went down but at this point she foolishly probably felt that she could trust him and also like she's not in the business like that so she knows that she can't talk to press, right? But she also is running around and she she seems a little naive to a certain degree about certain things. I mean, she's mm. in the business enough to not think, nah, yeah, I, I think I to might disagree with that. Like, yeah, she's, she's in the business enough to know that Oz <laughs> does not work for her, that Oz works for her father. She knows her father. If, if the thing about it is, if she wasn't in the business like that, then why would her dad tell her, I'm about to hand you the whole you thing? Next. Like, she knows the business. I think that what you said can hit the nail, which is 
she got too fucking comfortable with Oz. That's really mm -hmm. all it is. Mm -hmm. And she is naive because she might not be out there doing the killings. She might not be actually seeing the killings, but she knows they're happening. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was looking at this scene like it, it works for a show because we are supposed to know that this is a different version of Sophia. But at the same time, I'm still looking at you like you're fucking stupid. Why would you trust Oz like that? Well, uh, this is a big thing. This is snitching. They could view this as snitching. And you yeah. are trusting your fucking fucked up face driver? But she said <laughs> she said she wasn't going to wear the wire, right? She said they would kill her or something like that. Yeah, but, she wasn't like that. But just meeting up with the, the press person was a bad move with Oz. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I think she was stupid to do that. Right. Um, I think it was stupid just to meet up with the press anyway. But, you know, right. we... we we get the we have to kind of get the feeling that she really missing love her mom and she want answers now. Yeah, and that her her dad being evasive as he was, you know, led her down this path. So she was willing to risk it in mm -hmm. order to get some type of closure. Um, but I think um, there was something that triggered her to oh oh she had the flashback right, and then she was like nah nah I'm not I'm not talking to you uh, this is stupid and I'm out. Mm. My thing is this, Lou. Everything y'all said is baked into what I'm about to ask. Because was it a mistake for Sophia to cuss out Penguin like that after meeting with the reporter? So what y'all said is true. The mistake was bringing Oz. However, Oz, before she cussed him out, was like, look, I don't even think you, you should really be doing this. This is a bad light on the, 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 the business, the family and all that shit. You talking to the reporter. Maybe if you move a little bit differently. She was like, look, nigga, I ain't ask you for all that. You, you the fucking driver. You work for me. We don't give a fuck about you or none of that. Again, as we've noticed in this series, when Oz gets his feelings hurt after opening up, <laughs> he, turn, he do some backstabby shit, right? So that's yeah. what I was looking because I think because you're to your point, Ken, they were familiar. They were I'm not gonna say friends, but they were familiar enough to where they had a relationship to where it was like, I trust some this person to a certain degree. I think her telling him that was like, damn, everybody else would I would accept that from everybody else, but I didn't think you was gonna say that shit. And matter of fact, if that's what I am, if I'm just your fucking driver, I ain't yeah. your driver, I'm your daddy's driver. So I'm gonna tell him this goofy mm. ass shit you're doing in the parking lot. Mm. And it goes to show how green she is in the business. Like we, all of y'all just reiterated, like he works for your dad. You put him in a compromising position by even taking him there. Like he has mm -hmm. to say something or something's going to happen to him. Because if mm -hmm. they found out that you took him and you knew about this, then something's going to happen to him. He's a seasoned enough in, in the underworld to know that. So yeah. now you got his back against the wall. And like you said, Nick, and you talking crazy to me. So I know you have no idea what you're doing. So I need to notify someone in the higher up so they can kind of save you from this. I think that's how he was looking at it. I don't ever think that he looked at it as justification for him getting cursed out. Like, I think I think he was thinking when he told on her, oh, I have her best interest in mind because she don't know what she's doing. She's too naive. I don't think he's, he's, I think there are certain rules of the game he knows, like we shouldn't talk to the press. I think they all know that. That's like a given, right? Um, you know, I don't know if he's that as seasoned as he is now. You know, because even he was kind of walking around just driving the car, just uh, hunky dory or whatever. But I think Nick is right. Like when it happened, I was like, oh, you shouldn't have did that. She's in a very emotional high state when she saw the photo of her mom and the scratches and the claws. And then she had the flashback of her dad having those scratches on her, his, her arm, on his hand. And that's what triggered her to react in the way that she did to Oz, which therefore created this domino effect on everything that transpired after that, which is why he went to snitch because yeah, you two are right. As soon as she did that, she was like, oh, he was like, oh, hell nah, uh-uh. Nah, you're not about to get me caught up in that shit because we all know you're not supposed to be talking to the press. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to help you out and you cussing me out because of it. All right, fine. You know what? I'm not going down with this shit. I'm going to tell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what he did. He ran and told. He's mm -hmm. Um, we then see Sophia and Penguin go to Falcone's birthday party, um, and things turn left <laughs> really quickly after Pe we find out Penguin snitches on her about her secret meeting with the reporter. 
once she gets called into her dad's office. Um, Mike, what did you think about the conversation Sophia and Carmaine Falcone had um, as he confronted her about the reporter? I don't remember the details of what he said, but I mean, I knew what was happening, you know, when, when, when she was talking to that other woman and, you know, she was interrupted and they were like, Oh yeah, you need to talk to your father. He wants to see you. I was like, Oh, I was told, but I mean, I guess they kind of said that in one of the previous episodes, but I don't remember exactly what the conversation was at this point. He got right to it, Ken. He was like, <laughs> he was like, so what the you doing talking to the consider reporter? Like she came in on there, like happy birthday, daddy. You know what I'm saying? She knew she was in trouble. <laughs> yeah. If you ever have kids, yeah. Nick, that's what they do, bro. They try. <laughs> I like your shirt, daddy. No, what the fuck did you do? What did you do? <laughs> he cut to the shit, right? He was like, "Hey, bro, what's going on? What you doing?" And then she was just she, to me. She put her, uh, you know, um, I know this is a penguin story, but she put her foot in the mouth. Well, she was like, mm -hmm. she was like, Daddy, you um, you was you was doing this, you was doing that. I, I had questions about this and that, and I just had to go find my own answer. I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Gotta deny it, all that shit. And then yeah. lying. I don't mm -hmm. I ain't talk to nobody. Like press, what press? What the press? <laughs> what? what happened? Uh, your shirt? <laughs> your pants? <laughs> right. like, you need some cleaning picked up? Yeah, get Oz to do that shit. <laughs> we talking about football? <laughs> I got a silk press last week. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, no, no, no. Rob, what did you think about that conversation? No, nah, I thought it was again. I think I think she was showing off her acting chops, man. Like just her trying to backtrack out of it. Like, but you know, I I know you would have never did that. Like, like just her, <laughs> man. Like the way she was backpedaling, man. It was too late. It was mm -hmm. way too late, but uh, <laughs> but uh, it was good seeing her go through that and notice that, notice him actually being like, oh, a word, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I thought she did a really good job in this moment um, of, of like, you know, showing concern and then trying to back out of that concern for her own safety type of situation once she noticed what time it was. So no, nah, I, thought, I thought it was amazing scene. Yeah, she Thank was like, you. shit. <laughs> yes, you can see all her face. Yeah, her man. Voice. She did an amazing job here, man. I, I, I really enjoyed her in this, in this episode. Mike, I don't know if it was me when he put her, his hand on her cheek. I thought he was gonna slap the shit out of her or something. But he, <laughs> but the fact that he did it made it more scary too, because he was just like, I forgot what he was like. I didn't expect this. I you're sick. Like this. But yeah, he said you're, you're out of sick. your mind. He, 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 like, yeah, like, you don't know what you're thinking. You don't know what you're saying. Like. Oh, that was foul. That was foul. The way that they, the way that he was leading up to what he was about to do to her. Yeah, that was crazy. I was like, he about it. to pin this whole shit on him, mm -hmm. on her. I was like, yep. he about to pin all this on her, and that's how she's going to lose her mind. And this, yep. I was like, man, this is crazy. So, Lou, at this point, you really don't think Penguin knew what was about to happen. You just think that he was just. Like, I got a tail to save my own ass. Trying to save his own ass, yeah. Yeah, I don't think that he thought the dad would go to the extents that he did. Because, mm -hmm. again, going back to the, the killings, yeah. I'm assuming that the dad's the only person that knows that he did that. And now Sophia getting close, and Penguin doesn't know that he's the killer. So I'm going to tell him I'm thinking that I'm giving you the heads up so we can protect your daughter. I'm not thinking that you're going to pin the whole shit on her and get her locked up and go to the crazy house. Who would like, that's probably that? the last thing on his mind. Like, yeah, that's his daughter. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I think he went into it like, oh, I'm helping everybody out here. Yeah. I think the part that got me before we even got to that was when he walked up and Sophia, was, you could tell she was still mad. You know, when women get hold up to stuff, she was like, Pink, what are you doing in the inside? <laughs> I was like, damn, bro. <laughs> hey, bro, you shirt? <laughs> Like, nice like, yeah. doing it. doing it hey. with normal people. Ken, I, I, I took it as far as like, I took it as more penguin disrespect. Cause it was like, he was like, damn, nigga, like, you see me as a driver that much? You can't even imagine me inside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You yep. could only picture me outside. You treated me like a nigga, bro. Me. Like, I'm a slave. Like, I can't come in the house. True. You got a new suit. How you for how you for that? <laughs> 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 Snitching. 
We pay you too much. You buy suits? Like what? Oh, uh-huh, bro. That shit. I was like, damn, she don't know where to stop. She fucked up mm-hmm. too much already. Um, yeah. so this is this is part of the conversation where we can kind of talk about a lot of things at once, but after being arrested and taken into custody because of the of her father finding out that she was just getting too much information. Um, we see Sophia get treated like a damn dog throughout most of this episode as she makes a quick, a immediately quick transition to Arkham Asylum. Um, Mike, what were your thoughts on some of these scenes that uh, when it comes to like the lack of due process that we find out and also just how powerful Falcone is and fucking Gotham as far as how he just got passed through everything quick? No, nah, man, I like this. I like this. I mean, like you said, it shows just how powerful he is. We got a glimpse of that in Batman, but you know, it, it, it didn't just show how powerful he is. It showed how ruthless he is. Like he has to know how fucked up Arkham is. And the fact that he sent his daughter there to be treated like that, to be brutalized like that. I, I wish that they hadn't killed him in Batman. Cause I kind of wanted to see more of this. But, but I mean, it just goes to show that, yeah, like anybody that's out here fucking hand strangling chicks, they ain't got no kind of decorum or no shit. So I was going to say, Mike, we kind of did get to see that in the movie. He did uh, try to strangle the shit out of uh, He's Zoe Kravitz <laughs> just because she was a, a nigglet, baby. <laughs> he did. He poked the shit out of her. <laughs> and Sophie was asking about that, too. <laughs> God damn, he I forgot that she was his uh like half daughter. Was it was it what well, not yeah, half daughter? daughter. You can't have a half daughter. I forget, <laughs> what, it, I forget what it was, but yeah. A, a, a legitimate uh child, yeah. That's it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Out of wedlock, yeah, just because he was breaking he was baby. fucking around. Yeah. Because that, that child baby. came after she went into Arkham, right? Yeah, she was pretty young. So yeah, because when she was asking her brother about the mother woman. I thought she was asking, asking. I thought for a hot second she was asking about other kids too, but um, yeah. Until I really remember that. But anyway, um, you know what? I, I think about <laughs> like how fucked up the correctional system is, prison is, and whenever I see these and how people with money and and that's above it that don't have to deal with it. How when they finally get put in it, they realize yeah. all the shit that people yeah. have to do with it. Like, this is <laughs> right. This is right. Yeah. It's, like, are you yeah, gonna come out and be party. reformed and 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 help <laughs> over overturn that stuff? Because mm-hmm. she went, man. They they tr- hey, brutally treat her, bro. Can you're right? Because I I did over jump over a scene as far as her getting arrested. <laughs> Hey, bro, that shit was funny as fuck. <laughs> she was Man. like, she she knew she was about. She was like, did my daddy send y'all? Oh, okay, let me just go. Nah, nigga, get your hands behind me. It's <laughs> going to jail today. <laughs> <laughs> she, she ain't know what to do. I was over there looking stunned. He like, what? What you talking oh, about? Shit. She a Falcone, bro. Let her go. She ain't know what she was getting into. She thought she was gonna get a stern talking to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Rod, Rod, while we're in Arkham, what did you think about the crazy interaction Sophia had with the inmates, especially like, the tall one with the buzz cut and the other she one with the with, ass. With, with the kitty voice? Oh. Oh Magpie. my god, she was good too. The one that had like the now now that's how I stutter supposed to say <laughs> like, the, like she was repeating like stuff over and over again. It, she was she was really good. She was really good. That the, the tall the tall chick that kept like like kept that's saying not a stutter, repeating. bro. No, no, yeah, it's not a stutter. Yeah, it's not a stutter. That's it why was, I was, that's why it was funny. Head. Yeah, it's not a stutter, but it's like to Rex or something? I don't know. Like, I, 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 I it's a speech it, it, it was great. It was great. Whatever it was, oh. she was crazy. I believed her. I believed oh, she was crazy. Oh, yeah. I believe she was crazy. She man, was really she, good. Man, I believed her when she had that fork in her hand. Man. And just went out like mm. to me because to me like this, I was like, oh, to me, the brilliance of this episode was that. Everybody was damn near getting played to a certain degree, right? Mm-hmm. Even the girl with the buzz cut 
it seemed like she knew she was being used and they did some way to convince her to be a part of it. Right. And she was just like, I can't even deal with this shit myself. I want to die in this moment. She but was like, please kill me. Who, 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 who do y'all think? I'm sorry, Nick. I didn't mean to cut. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. But who, who, who paid her or who made her do this? Is this still Falcone that did yes. this? Yes. Because I think I'm thinking the doctor, the I think it was yeah. the doctors only. I think they I'm were thinking, just doing yeah. that themselves. Well, no, I I mean, the doctor who she called. No. Like the, the doctors couldn't make that kind of decision of let's let an inmate go beat the shit out of Falcone's daughter. So when I was watching it, I was like, okay, what is happening here? Because clearly this is a setup. Mm -hmm. Everybody yeah. chained but her. She went straight for Sophia, beat the fuck out of her. So who who set this up and why? I think it's Falcone. I think he was just trying yeah. to break her mm -hmm. to make her to make her really seem or come come off crazy. Like I think um I don't again, like I'm I'm looking at this from the standpoint of of two minds. One, Falcone mm -hmm. is a horrible father. He is putting his daughter through all this shit just so he can get out of his own shit. But two, and this is a very small percentage, so don't judge me. Is this him serving grace as a mob boss? Because anybody else who would be in that situation when it comes to snitching on us and, and revealing yeah. some shit, we would have to kill you. Yeah, just there's no if, ands, or buts. Hey, we ain't going through this long, goofy ass process of making you seem insane. Like you're just taking off the fucking board, but because you're my daughter, I gotta do this to you. You know what I'm saying? Killing is more merciful, Nick. Like he's torturing her. Yeah, but I but, but to your to your point, maybe he's doing that. Hoping that she'll come out stronger, mm. he literally drove her insane. Her. No, I think I think she thought I think he literally thought she wouldn't survive in there because she says it. She's like, he do he's mm. doing this to me because he know mm. I can't take this. She was mm. a completely sane person. Imagine being a completely mm. sane person in the worst uh, 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 facility that you can be in. In yeah. Gotham, that's crazy. Like she was just like, look, I know a lot of people say this, but I I didn't do. It. I'm innocent. She's like, like she was completely sane. Like they were just trying to break her, trying to break her. And yeah, man, I, I just think they did an amazing job with with trying to break her. Even, even the girl that was next to her, next door to her, she was she did a good, great job in her performance as well. Uh, um, but why not just kill her though, Rod? Why not just kill her? Yeah. Why? Why? If he, if he, if she says he's doing this to me because he doesn't think I'll survive it. That's like a long torture leading to death. Mm -hmm. Why not just kill her if it's if it's a mercy thing? The story he needed to pin the murders. He needs to he needed to pin the murders on her. But you can pin the murders on her without paying an inmate to go beat her up. That didn't help his story. But but if he she was, dies in to... Arkham, then you know it it, yeah, then it's it's all her actions are are her own. Oh wait! No, you know what? I just got it. Y'all fucking up. I just answered my own shit. Y'all didn't even catch it. I think he did that. God, I'm stupid. He did that because he was hoping she would then go back and kill her. In right. Arkham. That's is that mm -hmm. what y'all said? That's not what y'all said. No, I was trying to. I was trying to get there. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he said, but Ken jumped in with his wrong no, ass. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was trying to tell you the right shit. <laughs> but he coming in here with two plus two equals five and shit. <laughs> it makes sense now. Now I get it. Now I get it. You and she it? she knew off rip. She was like, why? She said, why is she? Why is it she ain't change? Why is it change? Why she ain't change? Ain't change? Like, ain't change? Damn! And she kept telling everybody, she ain't change, y'all. She ain't change. Somebody put chains on her. They're like, we know, <laughs> <laughs> we know, right? No, oh. I'm about to say, at, 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 at anybody who's gonna know, the guards know. <laughs> yeah. That's a crazy fucked up plan. Send pin the murders on your daughter. Send her to Arkham. Get somebody to beat her ass and then have the guards set her up to kill her. That's crazy. Yep. Damn, yeah. this show is good. I might change my mind on this episode because I've been holding that whole good. bit. I was really surprised y'all y'all didn't like this one that much, man. Like, no, it's I, a really good episode. It was still good. It was just my least favorite. Good. Yeah. I'm with we just kind of we kind of we kind of stayed in a certain places a little too long. 
Um, but mm-hmm. Lou, um, mm-hmm. was Sophia wrong to kill the girl with the little kitty voice? Magpie. Yeah. I can't remember. What did she kill her for? Nothing. She thought she was. She thought she was. She thought she was snitching on her. her. <laughs> yeah, she thought she was in on. Okay. Her. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that was just the the toll that that place had taken on her that quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it, it's already turned me into this. Like the 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 Sophia version that we seen in the first couple episodes, her killing Magpie is like okay, yeah, this is what the slow matriculation of her mm-hmm. turning into that character. So I think that was it wrong. Yes. Does it make sense? Yes. Spot Streets on, need buddy. a body, bro. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Streets need a body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she, you know, and she had, were they already torturing her by then too with electro yeah. shock therapy? Yeah, 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 oh yeah. yeah, she is. She had, had enough. She had, had enough. And Julian ass wasn't helping. Um, and then you know the other thing that was interesting is like you have to look at like you know these these type of mental institutions and there are so many places in the world that you are powerless because they think they're doing good for you. And she caught up on it. She was like, Oh, you're delusional. I I'm, I'm here to help. I'm Mm -hmm. trying to do this. It was like, Oh, um, it was something she said. She was like, Oh, you just saying that because you're trying to keep me here. These doctors, man, could just say a couple of phrases and you locked up in there and they can't ever let you out because you're branded as crazy. And because you're branded Mm -hmm. as crazy, no matter what you say, no one will ever listen. will listen to you. You know, so um, I was surprised they killed, because Magpie is an actual Batman villain. Um, so I was surprised they actually killed her as quickly as, as they did. Um, but she just was talking too much, man. She got high off that shit that we saw in the last episode, I assume, right? That's yeah. the mushroom shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, and it, she, yeah, she just started talking too much. <laughs> Bashed her head in. Mm. Well, uh, during her time at Arkham, as I mentioned, she meet uh, Ju- uh, Sophia meets with uh, Doctor Julian Rush, and he seems to be the only one that's actually kind of trying to look out for her. But I still have to ask the question, Rod: Do you trust Doctor Rush at all? Uh, that's Julian. Yeah. I mean, I don't know who to trust in this show. To be quite honest, I probably trust him more than I trust anybody else, uh, especially being that he like quit the the job or whatever but she called him out on that we, we're there right uh close to it but yeah you can go ahead and talk about it if you want to yeah 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 well tell me what she get when they flash back to present time i don't know if you're yeah there. well i was i was okay, just talking yeah. about her just her, in general her relationship with him yeah yeah so i i think he was genuinely trying to help 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 her at some point but again i just don't know who to trust in this situation in this situation anymore um, mm-hmm. but she's she's definitely kind of you know on, on her P's and Q's now that you know there's so many people that hasn't betrayed her at this point or whatever, and, and like she I'm sure she has a tough time um uh trusting men, but she she called him out though, like you got some enjoyment out of that, you got some enjoyment out of the power and things like that. Just kind of let her know. Same thing she does with her eyes, like look, I see you. You know what I'm saying? I do see you. Don't don't get it twisted. Like I see what you be doing, or whatever. You might be trying to help me a little bit, but you still got some enjoyment out, out of this. So I think she just kind of is still kind of skeptical, as is, as in I am too. I don't know who to trust in the show. You don't you don't trust him, Mike? Hell no. Nah. Ever since <laughs> ever since he left fucking Sons of Anarchy, I don't trust you. <laughs> Any show that he's on, he's a bad guy. But no, he has that. He has that. Don't trust me face. That weird. It's like a smirky grin thing he always does. No, I don't trust him. It's like a. It's like a pit bull smile. You can just yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, I'm about to bite the fuck out of you. He is always cast as a villain. So you're right, Mike. Mm-hmm. I've never seen him play a good guy. He's not. It sounds mean, but I don't think he's a good enough actor to play a good guy. I was gonna mm-hmm. say that too, but like, I didn't want to say it. But I'm like, I'm looking at him in this room, like, he giving you gold, and you coming back yeah. with shit turns. <laughs> he's really not. He playing the same dude he was in Sons of Anarchy. He, he well, no, nah, well, <laughs> Sons of Anarchy. Do you remember his character? He I hated. Oh, I, wait, he wasn't that guy, guy like, I hated remember? that character. I hated him too. But remember, he was like a little, he was like a little bitch boy. Remember? Mm. Yeah, he was a little what they call and him, then, roadies, a little You're thinking of like, when he was in uh Luke Cage. Yeah. 
That's what yeah, you're thinking. Yeah. He was Shane. He's playing you. the same exact mm-hmm. character as Shane. Got you. You're right. You're right. Mike, I'll never forgive him with Sons of Anarchy when he made us wait them a season and a half just because he was biracial. And he, he, he did all that goofy <laughs> shit. <Whoa. laughs> <Whoa. laughs> he was scared because right, his right. daddy was black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, that shit. The TV Man. and your daddy is black, and you scared for a season and a half was crazy. Oh, and they tried to <laughs> he was gonna kill himself. It was yes. gonna kill himself because his daddy was black, bro. <laughs> He'd rather be dead than have <laughs> black fight, and then to get booty raped by fucking uh Marilyn Manson. I was like, your whole character is gone, bro. Because oh, they were man. racist. He ain't know, man. man. <laughs> nah, he, bro, he, he bought bro. into it. Y'all basically saying he was like a uh, uh, damn near like that Dave Chappelle character that was black and in, in the KKK. He's kind of like him yeah. yeah, to a certain degree. But he nah, knew that they were racist, nah. so I didn't feel bad for him. But ever nah. since Sons of Anarchy, he, I've been like, I don't trust no parts of Juice. Nothing. <laughs> That's my <laughs> I they were so cool. fucking racist, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, uh, Ken, what did you think about the conversation um, she had with Julian when it came to just like her not trusting men? Like, she was like, men have always been liars to me or been causing me to like the most pain. But then she obviously leaned up close to the nigga, like she was about to kiss him or something. But she said all that shit. Like, what do you? Where did you come from? Uh, come away with that? Well, I mean. The one person she felt she could trust the most caused her the most pain. And that was her dad in in all phases, down to the point where he killed her mom. You know, so I mean that's that's the ultimate betrayal. And then Oz turned around and betrayed her as well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the doctor in there is betraying his oath to what he was supposed to do in uh out of loyalty to or pay to her dad so of course she's not julian is going to trust him at at all and he he looks like he's always lying and Mm -hmm. he's saying a lot of the phrases that the other doctor is saying so yeah she she's not going to trust any man anymore she's she's over that shit yeah you came away with the same thought mike yeah yeah i came with the exact same thought ken had yep she's done with all these motherfuckers. Yeah, that that's uh, what sets up a, a great segue to where we see Sophia head back to the Falcons house yeah. to fuck up a nice ass good dinner gathering. You know what I'm saying? They had meatballs, rabbit, they had all types, they had a nice spread. I don't um, know, Nick. When she came in with that dress, I I changed my whole tune. I told y'all hey, 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 this hey, I was about to wore the shit out of that dress. He That's what I was going out that dress. Lou, I was going to ask you this question cuz I was I was thinking I got to run this by Lou. I was like, bro, she looked a little <laughs> She looked a little thick in that phone. Mm-hmm. Like, she she mixed with something. something. She yeah, mixed with something. something else in there. Hey. She got, Yo, she got, even <laughs> even they said like, okay, yellow dress. Yeah, said that. She was hey, killing. She was wearing that dress, boy. She was killing. Mm-hmm. I had to, I had to, I had to do it. I had to do it. I had to look up. Yeah, look Literally. up the actor. After that. I said, "Who the hell is this?" Oh, come let on. Let me see who this. Let me go to the IG. Let me check out the rest of the pics. <laughs> I told y'all at the beginning. I was like, "This is my kind of chick." The way she, <laughs> eat, I was like, "No, nah, she got something going on." That, <laughs> that yellow dress. I was like, "God damn!" Ah, oh, yes, sir. Uh, who go? To, who go to a <laughs> yes, spaghetti? Uh. Hey, who? Who, who go to a spaghetti dinner eat with a yellow dress on? That's how you know she crazy. <laughs> right. right. And eating with her hands, bro. Eating with her fucking... Had a whole ball in her hand. No no pause. Oh, a whole shit. ball. And with the... Hey, my, that, hey, my, you ain't go, the thoughts that went through my mind while she was eating dinner that night. I'm like, all right, right. Man, let's, let's, get to the, to let's get to the end of this. Um, but, Lou, what did you think about the speech she gave at the dinner? Body in it, like we said before. Like, it, this... Again, the episode wasn't my favorite, but her performance is right up there with, like, behind Colin Farrell. Like, this speech, what she yeah. said, like, how people were looking and shit, like, it was perfect. And then what it led into and what we seen for the rest of the dinner, it was, like, perfect perfection. Even when dude tried to interrupt her, he, she was just like, Mm-mm. and she just looked at him like, mm-hmm. uh, what? <laughs> like, didn't say very much, and he was just, he shut up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah. Man. <laughs> it was like one of those when you somewhere you hear somebody like, oh, oh, this motherfucker crazy. Like, that's what you're looking at a real legit crazy person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, what, what did you think about her speech? 
amazing, man. That speech was incredible. And the way she delivered it, like mm -hmm. you, there's no, there's zero doubt that she's nuts. You right. get that, like, I'm this this chick is nuts. Yeah, nah, she 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 killed that entire scene. I loved it. And I it's not like you know, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was just saying it's not like nuts, like she just she just liked that. They did this to her. Right. Like, all of them did say, her dad, seeing seeing the seeing the family write those letters. She's yep. like, I basically don't have a family anymore. Yep. Like y'all are dead to me already. Y'all yep. are dead to me, and it, and it made sense. And she was right in thinking that as well. Like they should be dead to her. Like what they put yep. her through. Crazy, bro. That's, it, it was, a, great, it was that's great. a great point. That's a great yep. point, Rod. That's exactly yeah. what I was thinking too, Rod. I was like, man, the speech was so good because she was like, none of y'all helped me. Not a single one of y'all helped yeah. me. Y'all wrote letters to keep me in there. And I didn't even think about that. We didn't touch on. She was only supposed to be there for six months. Bruh. That six months turned into 10 years. Ten years. This is this <laughs> is like next level diabolical that y'all would do this to a fucking relative. Knowing she didn't, well, I guess they didn't know for a fact right, right. that she didn't kill those some people. some of them did though. Some of them did though. How do we how do we know? Yeah. Cause I think I think her brother her brother knew she didn't do it. That's why he was like the most faithful to her. Besides and him, think, though. But I, but I'm yeah. saying like but I'm saying like other people of the family know. Like Johnny knew Johnny knew she wasn't like that, that wasn't the shit that she did. I don't think Johnny knew because that's why Johnny kept looking at her like ah oh, maybe I shouldn't fuck with her too much because she's crazy. <laughs> Johnny pulled up to her at the last episode, like, look, I don't give a fuck if you're crazy. And he not. tried it again, and what happened? <laughs> he was like, he was like, he was like what are you other. what are you doing yeah. here, Sophia? Right. And what happened? She sat his ass down. He saw that yellow yeah. dress. That's what shut him up. Let me see what she gotta say. <laughs> Kid, were you uh um, were you surprised that she helped save the little girl, even though she let her mama die? <laughs> <laughs> she did like the little girl and the little girl is innocent in this whole thing too so um i'm not surprised that that she saved the little girl um i mean you guys already alluded to it. you guys were saying like everybody to her was already dead so this was her just kind of completing that task uh you know literally um but yeah you have to spare the little girl but shit now you got somebody that know what you did so now what you gonna do Wow. And what's crazy about that, that's the same little girl that the mom was trying to keep mm -hmm. her away from her, right? Because mm -hmm. she thought she was going to harm her. It's yep. like, damn, like, so they brought that back around full circle. Like, you thinking that she want to harm this little girl and she actually doesn't. Like, and then she ends up killing her. Like, yeah. Right. I was going to go off of that, too, as far as, like, the whole episode, she's been saying she's innocent. Even in that speech, she said she was innocent one more time. The only mm -hmm. other person innocent in the room is the little girl. So that's the only right. one that she really is gonna try to save. I didn't really think about all that until just then right. too. Like, yeah, this shit, shit crazy. Um, and, and then the audacity, she was like the audacity. Y'all body counts in this room. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't killed all these people. Like, like, like y'all think it, man. Yeah, that the speech was great. Um, at the end, we see why she left the window up before leaving the house that night, which was the same room that uh, Johnny Vitti was sleeping in. So he was the only one to actually live throughout all that commotion where we see the dead bodies, which was a great scene. Um, and then she wants to <laughs> we see Sophia try to have a conversation with that nigga. Mike, what is how did you find this up like the ending of this episode? How how great was it? So I didn't expect that. I I because when it, when she first walked in the room in the yellow dress, I was like, Oh, she's about to kill everybody. When she didn't do it, I was like, Okay, cool. I was not expecting her to fucking gas the entire house. So that scene of her in that badass yellow dress with the fucking gas mask on just prancing around the house. Fire. So goddamn good. So fucking good. But somebody yeah. needs to do that for Halloween. <laughs> yellow somebody somebody is going to do that. Somebody, somebody, somebody is going to do that. With, a, with the yellow dress on? With a yellow dress and a gas mask, I think that'd be a dope Halloween costume. Maybe I'll do it. <laughs> 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 yeah, but um, 
Yeah, no, nah, that that was dope. I, I did think that's what they were gonna do when she left the window, but I'm like, oh, she about to gas the house. She about mm. to do something like that. When I that's what that's what I, my mind immediately went to when she let that window open. But I was like, why? I didn't mm. know why she let that particular window open, and then we find out why she let that one open. I didn't even catch it. I was just thinking she was just being weird. Oh, it was great cinematography. You know, I don't know if y'all know, but the window pane came up. She her head was perfectly in the. In the square, like I was like, man, they are really killing this in every way possible. Like, man, mm. that's crazy. Like, that takes some coordination to do something like that, film wise, to be able to let the window up with all of those paint, paint, uh, panes, and then her be perfectly centered in the middle of that. Like, that that's that's impressive. What did you think about the end of Lou? Perfect. It was perfectly done. The imagery of it, uh, it's the cinematography, as as Rob spoke to, even the little subtle stuff like leaving the window open and then it coming back and you're like, oh, that's what she did. Mm -hmm. All of that shit was great. Oh, and the music too. Which the music the overlay. Round. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. man, that was great. That just added more to it. it. It made it sound insane. Like it made it sound insane. Like with the music, like classical music playing while yeah. that's happening. <laughs> they did something similar. What was that movie that came out like a a couple years ago that everybody loved? Jamal uh, Pearl. No, 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 no. It was uh, I think they did it on the movie about the rapper. No, um, no, we were the white rapper in Florida. What the fuck is white name? rapper in Florida? The hell? Yeah, they got the um, gold teeth. Gucci Man was in the movie. Are oh, you talking about Spring Break? Oh, you talking about Spring Break? Yeah, they did this. They did this on Spring Breakers. That's not what I'm thinking of. The, the The movie that I'm thinking of, it ended with the main guy getting butt ass naked. And <laughs> oh, you're house. talking about that movie? Um, with, I think it was last year. I don't think we reviewed it, oh. but everybody was talking about it. Uh, yeah, I thought it was awful. Ah, shit! This almost seemed like they took from that scene, but they just did it ten times better because that was supposed to imply that this was a crazy person dancing through a house and just being weird. They did it in this, but they did it so much better. Yeah. Um, Ken, with the way this episode ended, I think this is the second time so far in this series Johnny VD has woken up or been interrupted in his sleep somehow, some way, butt ass naked with a gun <laughs> in his face from <laughs> Sophia. <laughs> how do you think? How do you think this conversation is going? In? Going into the next episode. Um, uh, are you talking about Saltburn? Yes. Okay. Yeah, oh, I hadn't you. seen Saltburn. Yeah, I hadn't seen Saltburn. Shit. That movie's but I haven't I seen it because awful. you said that. I wanted to see it until you said that. Yeah, well, until I mean, you said that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, the, a dance hey, when he explained it, I knew no. I hadn't seen it. No, 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 no. When, <laughs> I, uh, I, when I said I wanted to see Saltburn, you told me don't bother, and I never saw it because you said don't bother. No, nah, I don't listen to me when I say that. You might like it. A lot of people loved it. I thought it was whack. But mm. this this scene in this, it seemed like they took from that and they just did it just worlds better. Because that he's supposed to be crazy in Saltburn too, but it didn't hit mm. like that. It's a wild ass movie. But uh <laughs> I've heard like, it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's out there. But anyway, um, so I don't know. Um, I don't know what she wants from him. Mm. What and and how the conversation is going to go. Mm -hmm. Um so I have I'm 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 lost. Like I, so I and I and I like that. Um that they kind of left a little bit of mystery there. But you know, I loved everything that preceded it, man. Like I think it's a good origin story, character term for her to show why and how you know she is the way she is and her doing what she did the breaking point was once again um um finding out a man just betrayed her you know someone that she was trying to hopefully feel like she can trust again because they had that relationship before and turns out he once again you know did harm to her so she was just like fuck all this shit fuck all of y'all because all of y'all are the reasons why the last 10 years of my life have been hell 
Mm-hmm. So I'm going to get rid of everybody except this innocent child and this guy, Vidi, that I need for whatever reason it may be. Yeah, I think she thinks she can use Vidi because Vidi didn't didn't seem loyal to begin with to the to the family because he was sleeping with somebody's mm-hmm. wife, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Uncle, Uncle Luca. Uncle, Luke, Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Luca's name. wife. So she, she probably mm-hmm. knows that she could probably manipulate him and get get him to do things that you know she wants him to do and just probably kill him off at some point or whatever but at least she can oh. use him in that way but what does what power does he have at this point well um, he I, obviously has some sort of powers for us like getting things done but that was only because he was working for luca though Right, so she she sees herself as that person now, and then you know if I'm the big dog, you probably can get the stuff done for me the same way you got it done for someone else. Hmm. That that that's just me guessing. Yeah, why, yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't know exactly why she kept him alive, but that would be the the most logical thing in my mind at just using mm-hmm. him because he is a strong uh, worker or mm-hmm. whatever. Obviously, he is right. You know the way he was talking. He was talking cash shit to her, and she was yeah, crazy. Mm-hmm. And, and like he like oh you know yeah and, and he did have the relationship with the triad but i don't know if they still need that now mm. oh yeah oh yeah because she's gonna need a she's gonna need a team so that's what that's what confused me about the end of this because i was like okay well you just killed right the entire family <clears throat> what is your next move and when they showed her keeping vd alive i was so lost i was like why but I guess that would make sense if she's trying to build a new team. Maybe she wants to team up with the triads, but against the Maronis? I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. I'm down yeah, to find it. out, though. I like yeah, I was, to, you know, I'm, I'm cool to find out. I was going to say the same thing. I think I, I really just – I don't know if they're, we're going to go back to Oz and Vic right after they pulled off to see what happened with them mm-hmm. during this, you know, this time we've been spending with Sophia. Mm-hmm. Either way, I'm with it. Um, shit, we got what, four episodes left of this season, which is very interesting because they just keep they keep pushing the bar. I think with each episode, and I like that. So I'm curious to see what happens next. You know um, what, Nick? So many shows that we reviewed will be like, "Oh man, we're getting to the halfway point, and like they haven't done anything. Happened. This is yeah, nothing's happened. But like, this is the first time I feel like." It's been it's been a long time at least that we've gotten to the halfway point, and I've legit been like, they've done such good character development that I actually give a fuck yeah. about yeah. Uh, most of the people on this show to find out what happens. I didn't even think about the fact that we're just at the halfway point. I was thinking there's only yeah. like a couple of episodes left, and they God, killed so a lot of people too, was, Nick. You like that? Too, I, I was just about to say two things. I was like, Mike, you need to stop watching MCU shows, and two. <laughs> And two, they start off the series with me. They when 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 Penguin got upset, it started popping out the motherfucker, <laughs> and then he was laughing at it. First episode, first 10, 15 minutes of the series, I'm yeah. like, oh, we in for a good treat, because like obviously he fucked up early. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I'm I'm with it. Yeah, I left I left this episode like, how do they get the DC show so right? Like how did how did they make something like this but then fail horribly at some of these movies? That's what I'm trying to understand. Like like how is that possible? Maybe it's James Gunn. He's not involved. Damn. Well, no, he 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 gave a he gave a few notes. He said it wasn't okay. much that he had to change because like they were already. Oh, doing the job. gotcha. But obviously because it's overall arcing in the Batman this new Batman universe, he gave a few notes. But I think he really liked where the show was going. Um, I'm more I'm more interested based off of what you were talking about, Rod. They got the new show coming out soon, um, Lanterns, with uh, Lou's favorite white boy, uh, Kyle Chandler, in it and shit like that. Uh, I'm watching um, that. <laughs> I'm watching that because my boy. Yeah, is. like based off of Green Lake, like it's, it's going to be John Stewart and Hal Gordon. Um, they picked the dude from uh, Rebel Ridge to be John Stewart. Mm-hmm. So um, he's a good. What, the Stewart. black guy. Yeah. yeah. Oh hell no. Nah. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested in seeing what this new James Gunn TV series stuff like because I even think they're doing Supergirl too. But either way, um, I like it. Yeah, this show's yeah. great. This is anything great. like this? It, it's it's uh, I have hope for real. Hmm. Well, yeah. you know, being off the CW helps. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> you know, yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. Cause... They can make it darker and more gritty and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, overall yeah. better. <laughs> yeah, just overall better, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because woof. But I heard those shows weren't half bad either, though. I heard those shows wasn't half yeah, bad. Who are you talking to? I'll say outside of Smallville, <laughs> and even then, they yeah, nah, it's they, only Smallville and Black, and Black Lightning so and Black Lightning. Arrow, <laughs> Arrow, Arrow was good. Black Lightning is awful. Arrow, Arrow, Arrow was good like the first few seasons. I'll give you that. Oh, okay. But uh, <sighs> once once Black Lightning had an albino villain, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm. I'm That's they, great. You know, they, they 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 didn't care, bro. Like they didn't care. albino can't be evil, Nick. What the fuck? If you're albino, wouldn't you be angry as fucking evil as hell too? <laughs> If you know you black, but nobody treats you like, it. hey, being black and not being able to be in the sun is that that is a, that's a curse right there. So. You can't well, never back to the motherland. You just have to go somewhere <laughs> white, <laughs> a Nordic go like, place. Go to Alaska. Being, being well, white with the being, the Netherlands. <laughs> being white with black features is like a Donald Trump nightmare. <laughs> Man, <laughs> that would yeah, that's infuriating. Man, you got man. part of the privilege, but the other part you don't you'll get. get none of the, like, you'll get part? none of the perks. Get, right. He was only good during COVID because he could cover up his nose and his lip. <laughs> oh, all right, Rob. Right, you should have stopped us right there, bro. All right. <laughs> hey, but, but last thing I'll say, I think this did give us confirmation that Penguin lied. About that story he told Vic. I remember, he said he worked for a mob boss, yeah, and that the mob boss turned out to be a snitch. Yeah, now, now we, I think this. Oh shit, damn, that was it. Yeah. Right. That's about yeah. him. Yep. Yep. Right. Yeah. Now Rod yeah, called yeah. it. Nah, Rod called yeah. it out early. Uh, what I was about to say when that nigga was just when he in the beginning when he was just yelling and spitting and shit, I was like, she looking at this nigga like he a fucking dirt bag. Like, he <laughs> her. like he looked like a goofy ass, just nasty mouth motherfucker when he was. That was a great scene of him just doing that. Like I, I thought that was they said they started this episode off just so great. Yep, 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 yep. But no, they did an amazing job with this. Mm-hmm. Those are our thoughts on this episode of The Penguin. Please let us know what you guys think. FPS Podcast is the Reddit thread. That's also our handle for IG and Twitter. And we'll catch you on the next recap. We out. Peace. 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 The Frames Per Second Podcast. Bye, 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 bye.